about drugs in a school, Sheriff? Yep. There is no school immune to that. They are, they are, it is insidious. Every school has some degree or another. And the schools that are successful, probably the best success is you drive it off campus, and then, yep. then, then you have young people engaged in that activity uh, away from the school setting. But I think one of the things that's important on that, and we, how, how can a parent, how can a citizen get involved? I, and I heard from a Sac County deputy sheriff years ago at a, at a gang seminar, and he said, the best advice I can give you, we were all parents, he goes, don't be a high school dropout. Because I'm not talking about your kids, I'm talking about you. Be involved in the high school. Because a lot of times high schools, it's, it's a little, you know, we were all involved in our kids' elementary schools, and my wife worked in the classroom. But then you get to high school and it's a little bit, well, not so fast, we don't. But there are opportunities there for a parent to be involved. And I think that what, what John mentioned is that they, these things come with warnings. Uh, how do you know if your kid is getting involved in drugs? Well, look at their grades, look at their act activities, look at their friends. Uh, you're going to see it. You're going to see a change. You know, and that, then what do we do? I, a lot of it is talk to your kids. You think we have lots of problems uh, with with uh, our kids because we have two parents who work either out of necessity or, or uh, uh, obviously some do it because of choice, but there are some who do it because of necessity. Do, do we have we have problems with our children uh, and the young people because we don't have that that parental supervision on a uh, 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 on a daily basis, hour by hour. You know, by the way, if if I got in trouble at school, Ooh. that wasn't nearly right. as bad as the trouble I was going right. to get in at, at home. It was never a time in my my growing up when my dad would say to me, "Now I know the teacher's wrong." <laughs> no, that uh, phrase or, or did not get, exist. Let's get our attorney and go. Right. <laughs> yeah. yep. it's, a, it's a completely different world. I think as much as it may be incorrect politically to, to make that observation, it does make the parenting process uh, more challenging, I think, when you don't have a parent uh, with the child most of the time. Uh, that said, many people don't have that option, or even if it's a matter of choice, what can you do to, to compensate for that? I think you have to be that much more in tune to what's going on with your kids and recognize, as Ed says, the early symptoms of uh, behavior that may suggest that there's, a, that there's a change. If grades drop, if the kind of friends they socialize with uh, seem to change, if, uh, if their, their clothing, their attire of choice uh, changes, they no longer have an interest in sports and those activities we generally associate with, with more wholesome kinds of behavior, all of a sudden they're going into a different uh, element, that's something to watch for. So you think there, there are warning signals along the way? I, I absolutely believe there are. Oh, yeah. And I think even if you look at the studies that were done, back to school shootings for a minute, every shooter told somebody. Everyone. They, they really, from the Secret Service to the FBI, they've done a lot of analysis of this. Every shooter told somebody. And, and a lot of times, they'll do it in their writing. So if you have an opportunity to see what your child is writing, read it. Be, yep. be concerned if you start seeing some of these uh, very morbid uh, you know, essays and thoughts. All right. Let's talk for a moment. Let's kind of segue in, if, if, to I, uh, identity theft. There's a that that that's a, something that's growing in the United States, and we hear from time to time about databases that were breached. Uh, hasn't been too long ago that someone lost several million uh, 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 names and addresses and telephone numbers, social security. What about ID theft? Is it on the rise in Sacramento County? On the rise in Placer oh, County? Yeah. Very much so. It is. It's a concern. I think that. Uh, this very legitimately affects so many people. And, it, and it's, it seems as though there's little you can do to prevent it, but there are some things you can do very basically. Uh, anything with your social security number and account numbers on it should be shredded. If I don't sell shredders, I don't get a commission off any shredders that anybody else buys, but have a shredder in your home and shred those documents immediately. Uh, check your mail regularly. If you don't have the luxury, if you're in a neighborhood that has uh, the unlockable mailbox and you don't have the luxury of staying on top of it and checking it all the time and keeping important documents out, uh, make a change. Have your, pick your mail up at the post office uh, because that's a good invitation for people who can get into your accounts and your records and, and steal from you. And it's unfortunately it's the crime that keeps on giving. The initial impact is horrible, but then I think it, the secondary and follow-up uh, uh, impact from that is tremendous and can really be a devastating experience. It also affects uh, seniors disproportionately, so yes. we baby boomers have to be watching out for our parents and the potential for them to be uh, so affected. Well, Sheriff uh, Bonner, let me just ask you this question. Uh, if one of our viewers has found that they have, in fact, uh, been victimized with I ID theft, what, what do they need to do? What, what steps can they take? Well, our, you can call us right away, 
and we'll, we'll start whatever ball rolling we have to do because there's going to have to be a report filed even for your banking institutions all this they don't require you that you you notify us uh, has anybody here been the victim of identity theft i have not oh, oh you have well my as my son and and i quite frankly found the banking end of it not overly concerned they really you know just kind of raise your fees it wasn't a big loss but somebody had compromised my son's account my youngest boy and got his pin number and they actually drained his account in new jersey Mm. made new cards you know and, and they used uh, ATMs that were uh, no cameras in any of them so I mean it was very well organized and we are finding organized groups of people doing this uh, but I think the first thing is you got to report it and I think the other thing is is it is get back in it's just uh, you know crime prevention month you can prevent some of the stuff some of the things John has mentioned we have uh, a wonderful deputy sheriff named Jim Hudson who is this he is on this stuff he loves work in these cases and he does a seminar about once a month to the community on how to, how to uh, help yourself. Uh, one thing we found, the Senator, was that uh, people were using these portable scanners, put them over one at the gas station, and as you swipe your card, they, they're watching you with a video camera, they're getting your PIN number, and they've got your swipe now. So Jim tells the community, he says, shake those things. When you go to the gas station, shake those things. And if it's loose, that's a phony one. And he goes, now grab it, run into the store, call 911. He says, because somebody angry is going to be following you. And son of a gun, a week after his seminar, we found one at a local uh, gas station in Newcastle. It's about a $25,000 piece of equipment I'll be darned. That, that we now have and the crook doesn't have. But it was all just an, a, a heightened awareness by somebody. And the information on that magnetic collector saved a lot of people some grief. Well, gentlemen, we have just a couple of minutes left, and so let me just ask you the $64 question, and thank you very much for the job that you're doing and the work that you're doing and, and uh, the work you're doing on behalf of, of, of your counties and, and, and your constituents, our constituents. But if today someone would, were to say to you, well, what do you think about a career in law enforcement? Sheriff Barnard, what do you think? I think it's the greatest thing you can do. My, my oldest son is a police officer in Roseville. I am honored that, that he thought enough about what I did to, to join that ranks. But it can be a very dangerous job emotionally and physically. But by gosh, you know, John and I have been at it a long time. It can be the most rewarding thing you could ever hope to accomplish. I'd encourage him. Sheriff McGinnis, you've got openings? Absolutely, we have openings. We're looking for good people. And uh, it's the best decision I've ever made, frankly. And I never have regretted it for a moment. I absolutely love it. I've been doing this for 28 years. And I'm more than eligible for retirement. I have no desire to retire. It's, I absolutely love it. And many of my uh, contemporaries feel the exact same way. Just, I know we, we wouldn't want to do anything else. No. So, if, so if somebody's interested in a career in law enforcement, they can call the Placer County Sheriff's Department, and there's a, there's a career opportunity, uh, a link someplace on your web. We have our website. The county has a website. We also have a recruiting team that will we'll be happy to meet with you. We'll talk about career options. We'll give you a ride along in the patrol car, sit along in a dispatch center, walk along, or you know, work in the jail for a bit, and we'll show you all the things that we do. Same thing is true same with us. us. Uh, www.sacksheriff.com will get you a good recruiting videotape and, uh, <laughs> and his recruiting phone number, 874-COPS, 916-874-COPS. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, appreciate uh, you being here. Thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, watching our Capitol Report. The, this is Senator Dave Cox. We'll see you next time. You can contact Senator Dave Cox at his office in Sacramento. Call 916-651-4001. Or you can email him. Thank you for watching The Capitol Report.